What's up everyone, welcome back to After the Storm. This is the Canes game review for game number 19 of the season. A big 6-3 win over the Philadelphia Flyers. So that's a lot more like it. Right, that's a that's a big win. Uh, we'll get into the intro in a sec, but I thought this was uh, a very solid response from a team uh, after a very rough end uh, to the Western Conference road trip. There, introing this game. Oh my goodness, Marnuk's off the top line. Hallelujah, he is no longer on the top line. There's been actually a lot of line changes in this one. Uh, Teravine back up to the top line. Trocek and Stahl actually swapped their lines. So Stahl's playing with uh, Jarvis and Svechnikov. Uh, maybe just a bit of a shakeup there because it seems like, to me at least, it seems like Trocek's been a little bit less than effective uh, in the last few games. So this is a good uh, little shakeup to see if he can generate some momentum. And Tiranta gets a start in the net. I think this is his fourth start of the season already. And at the other end, Carter Hart, who beat the Canes uh, in the last up last matchup rather between these two teams and just 50 seconds into this one drew coming around the net kind of spins off a defender throws the puck out in front Provorov there taps the puck past Auntie Ranta and the Flyers lead one nothing but there's a challenge on the play and I'm gonna be honest I don't agree with the challenge on this one I, I understand why uh yeah I guess they probably just went for it and went off the basis of like who really knows anymore what goaltender interference is, but really on this one, I thought it was rather cut and dry. It seems that Couturier uh, and the uh, you know contact between Ranta and Couturier in the crease really happens pretty much when the puck's past Ranta anyways. So Couturier doesn't really interfere on this play. Interfere, I should say. Maybe he, he doesn't really impede Ranta's ability to get over to make a save or to make a save in general on this play. And that's, it's a good goal. It's it's a fine call, and uh, it's one the refs actually got right. So Rod, of course, loses the challenge, and the Carolina Hurricanes head to the pa uh, penalty kill. So Philly gets their first power play of the game. And nothing would really happen on this one. Uh, pretty easy kill for Carolina, and they get themselves kind of stabilized early on in this game. Not too long after, Martin H just tripped up, sending Carolina to the power play. Again, same as, almost the same as the Flyers' uh, power play from just before this uh, not a lot of chances philly kills it off pretty easily carolina really is having a tough time on the power play as of late but as the period or as the uh, penalty expires and we're back to five on five sebastian aho walks into the zone and just gets a shot off and it's beats him tara vine in the lone assist ninth goal of the season for sebastian aho who in this game looked like a maniac who just wanted to continuously shoot pucks so nice play there just to let the puck go we got a tie game, 1-1. Justin Braun, right after that, would take a delay of game penalty. Carolina heads back to the power play. Carter Hart making a nice stop on this one off of a Ajo redirect. Again, Ajo was all over the game in this one. And a shorthanded chance opens up. Joel Faraby uh, really senses that uh, Seth Jarvis, not a great defensive player in a one-on-one -on -one situation, comes down, makes a great move, shoots it. Ronta probably wants that one back. Shorthanded goal, and the Flyers lead 2-1. Philadelphia kill off the penalty. Again, Carter Hart was a big story in this first period, looking very, very solid to open it. And that's where we would end up 2-1 Flyers heading into the second period. And early on in the second period, uh, Ajo just gets the line, throws a puck perfectly on net. I'm not sure if it actually just goes straight under the bar or if it hits Carter Hart's glove. Nevertheless, that's a goal. Ajo's now got his 10th of the year, second of the game. We're tied 2-2. And almost right after, this was like a, like a crazy stretch of mid, th uh, three or four goals, I think. I think it was three goals in a minute and 12 seconds in this stretch. Puck comes over to the right, sort of top of the right circle. And Ristolainen just walks in. And, and for Ronta, this is, I have expected him to get pulled after this game. This, or after this goal, I should say. But yeah, Ristolainen walks in. All the time in the world, there's nobody screening Ranta. This is one you've got to have. And Ristolainen just slap shot right through Ranta. Flyers go right back up 3-2. And right after that, a scramble in front. 
Jesper Foss gets a rebound as people are flying around in the crease, gets it past uh, Carter Hart, and we're tied up, tied up at 3-3. This crazy second period wouldn't be done here. He just goes off for interference. Philly gets their second power play of the game. And on this one, the best chance, of course, a kill off for Carolina here. But the best chance, Cam Atkinson hits the post. And then back down the other way, a beautiful place. Uh, Svechnikov, D'Angelo, Jarvis, everybody involved in this one. A great tic-tac-toe play. One of the maybe the most beautiful goal of the season for Carolina. Comes uh, just a great passing play. And on the doorstep is Jesperi Kotkaniemi. He taps that in. Fourth of the season for him. And the Canes lead 4-3. Afterwards, the physicality would pick up a little bit. McEwen and Smith getting into a bit of a fight. Sort of dropped the gloves. Not as much as the Svechnikov uh, from the last game, but really uh, they get into a, a bit of a scrap here. McEwen gets the double minor for roughing on the play. Smith with just the minor uh, roughing penalty. And Carolina heads back to the power play. Philadelphia would end up killing that one off as well. And then late, just towards the end of the second period here, a nice passing play. They find Steven Lorenz cutting in, or Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. I'm never going to get this right. Steven Lawrence cutting in. He makes a great move uh, around a defender, really, you know, shields him off, gets the puck over onto his forehand and flips it up past Carter Hart. Five three canes. And then from here on out for the rest of the second period, it was the Auntie Ronta show making big stops. One off of Nick Sealer. Made another one off of Connor Bunneman. And really, this one was about uh, a very bad giveaway by Andre Svechnikov at the line. Just threw a backhand at the point. I don't know what the heck he was thinking on this one. Uh, but, but Ronta ends up bailing him out. And we head to the third period with the canes leading 5-3. And as the third period opened up, the first big thing that happened, you know, on Andrei Svechnikov on the ice, uh, his stick, I noticed this on the goal, he changed his stick tape back to black. He hasn't used black for a really long time. I would say maybe even into the uh, first games of last season, in the uh, abbreviated season, f since the first time he's used the black stick tape. And uh, yeah, corrals the puck and snipes it past Carter Hart. Canes leads 6-3. A big, big goal as an insurance marker. Brett Pesci would end up taking a holding penalty on Claude Giroux. Philly goes to their third power play of the game, but Carolina would also kill this one off. Travis Sanheim with the best chance in this game of for any Flyers player to get, them, especially to get them back in it. He has a wide open net. Looks like he gets like somebody gets some sick contact on him at the last second, uh, but he has a wide open net. And he slap shots it straight off the post. Ivan Provorov would haul down Marnichis. Uh, sending Carolina back to the power play. Philly kills this one off. Again, the power play very out of sorts right now. And that's how this one would end. A 6-3 win, a big win to end this road trip for the Carolina Hurricanes. I'm very excited. I can take this white jersey off uh, for these videos. I can throw a different one. I think we're wearing the black one against Washington next. But I'm very excited. Uh, let's get back home and start getting back into a more routine schedule and uh, see what we can do at home against the top top team in the Washington Capitals. So let's go ahead and get into some player analysis as well. Let's start off with the good. Obviously, Sebastian Ajo, two goals in this one, uh, seven shots on goal. Man, what a night for him. Just wanted to shoot the puck. That was like his main goal as he came out for this game. He just wanted to shoot the puck. Uh, he had the snipe, two great shots that ended up going in here. And uh, as much as we've been talking about Tavo Teravainen, you know, really starting to let the puck go and Aho is a fantastic shooter uh, so we should be looking for more of that as well it's just him being able to release that puck so well he's gonna score probably 30 or 40 this season easily Tony D'Angelo man I know like I think I put this out on Twitter and obviously there's uh, still some stuff with you know, like people and people are allowed to feel however they want to feel about Tony but I started posing the question about what is a potential extension going to look like for Tony D'Angelo? Because the reason why Tony D'Angelo was really in Carolina in the first place is mainly due to the fact that Dougie Hamilton was moving on. And the Canes didn't really want to commit $9.5 million to Dougie Hamilton, especially at his age. D'Angelo is considerably younger than Dougie is, probably about like three or four seasons. So, or three or four years, I should say. But still, I wonder if there's something going to end up happening there with with that but um i know there's there's lots of contracts coming up there's martin natchez there's um 
there's D'Angelo, there's Kotkaniemi, there's uh, Bear. Bear's another one that's coming up too. Most of them are restricted free agents, so that's pretty good. But I would be very curious to see if there are extension talks, what those numbers go at, because he is having an incredible season for an offensive defenseman. And I think the other player, of course, I mentioned him earlier, yes, Barry Kotkaniemi, I thought this was probably one of his top games, maybe not, if not, maybe his best game uh, as a member of Carolina. He wasn't, you know, um, sometimes he, as Habs fans can describe, as Bambi on skates. Sometimes he's all over the place. Sometimes he's, his balance isn't there and stuff, and he's kind of floating all over the ice. Not so in this game. He was very direct uh, with most of his plays. And, uh, yeah, he had a really good game in this one. Average. The first one I'm going to talk about is Trocek. Um, again, he's a guy that I've just been... It's been very easy to miss him on the ice. As of late, he's just in a bit of a rut. And hopefully he can get out of it. I'm sure he can. Um, there's going to... I remember last season when he just scored a ton of goals. It was crazy how much he was scoring. And we were looking at... Gee, there's another guy who's coming up at the end of the season who need, might need a contract extension. So, yeah, Trocek is... Um, yeah, he's, he's struggling right now. Let's see if he regains the form a little bit. Dropping him down that line might help him a little bit, uh, get him a little bit more comfortable. The other one I had was Antti Ranta. He, again, a very strong second half of the game, but the first half incredibly weak, so he just had a very average outing here. Uh, some goals he definitely want back. I'm sure he wants the Faraby one back, and he definitely wants the wrist line one back. And bad players in this game, I didn't have any for Carolina. I thought everybody played very, very strongly. Um... The only one who really could have gotten it was uh, Auntie Ranta. And for the Flyers, a player to highlight. Let's highlight Claude Giroux, the captain. Some talk about uh, him potentially moving on. He's also up at the end of the season. He's made it pretty clear who he's willing to play for in this league. And he, it's only other, one other team. And that team is nowhere close to contending. So I wonder if he most likely just ends his career as a Flyer at this point. But again, a very still a very strong player. I think he's had a couple down seasons and he's very much, like, the, the focus has really gone off Claude Giroux. He's still one of the best passers in the game. Uh, he's become a lot faster of a player as well. Uh, but somebody I noticed this game quite a bit, making really, really solid plays. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up down below. Hit that subscribe button so you can get these videos as soon as they upload as well if you hit that notification bell. And as always, guys, I will catch you on the next one.